Round three, fight against our good buddy Forley. He's been playing Rakdos Bullies lately. Let's see what he brings to the table. Wow, this look at this hand. The classic Evolving Wilds, Hall Mountains, Double Sign of Blood. Don't have luck. I want to win. Well, of course, we all want to win, buddy. Come on, man. Sportsmanship, though. Alright, I'm going to keep this hand mainly because any swamp is live and any other non-land is live. Tormenting Voice is especially good. So, and I'm on the play. Swamp, what do we draw? Swamp, wow. How lucky am I? Alright. Uh, yeah, any non-land is good. And gas. So, those are pretty solid. Ooh, looks like we're playing against blue control. I'm just going to sign a blood again. Good. We don't need all these lands. It helps fuel our delve. So here, what are we going to do? Lead with Tormenting Voice. Yep, ship another land. There we draw. Soul Tie Scavenger. Good. So something two mana, three three flyer, okay. Yeah, okay. Thought he was gonna have I guess disdainful stroke he could have, but that's not really a main deckable card against some of the aggro decks in the format. So he's got anticipate, elite soul fist, ooh, sucks better net. Okay, looks like he is going for the Zephyr Scribe Retraction Helix combo deck. Where you uh, have a four card combo in case you guys haven't seen this before you have elusive spell fist which basically uh, becomes unblockable and adds one point of power for every spell you cast Zephyr Scribe targeted with retraction helix will tap, bounce the silk spider net you replay the silk spider net, you untap Zephyr Scribe and that just created an infinite loop of casting spells, not creature spells an elusive spell fist gets infinitely large power and can't be blocked. So, trick here is he's got a 1-5 reach, which is slightly annoying, so I can attack. He knows he can't block because he would die to a burn spell. So I just play my flurry post-combat because I want to get some value from these havens and these 2-3s are doing nothing against his 1-3-1-5. So, Ooh, there's a Zephyr Scribe. Okay. So here, I guess I can try to attack with everything, and I might be able to get in. Yeah, a little bit, but his defenses are pretty well set up here. Uh, I lead off. I guess I try to Vulture's even kill my 2-3 since it's doing nothing. Draw some cards. Yeah, just a bunch of land. So, getting flooded. And he's got another spell fist, so he's got a little redundancy. So, all he needs is retraction helix with protection right now, and he's fine. So, the only non redundant piece of his combo is the scribe, so I'll attempt to kill the scribe. Uh, looks like he's got negate. Well, at least he's tapped out now, so if I could just draw removal, I could kill it. Nope. So, I guess I can attack him in the air for two. Then I can play an Avon. Ship my other two, three. Oh, I guess I want to play this Evolving Wilds first. So I get one more land out of my deck, then I play Vulture Saven. Sack the 2 3. Read the bounds and not a whatever. Alright, so. The problem here is, like, I tap out, which basically means if he has Retrash and Helix, I'm dead. Treasure Cruise. 
And he does. So if you watch, he plays Retraction Helix. And this guy taps it, bounces uh, zero, 0 And then he replays Silk Spider Net. It becomes one power bigger, untaps his Zephyr Scribe, makes it bigger. So I was just dead. It wasn't going to take very much long, much longer to combo since 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You know, he only need to do it three more times. And then those were lethal. So that is game one. Sideboard, I am going to need to bring in some magma sprays, some fiery impulses, some duresses. So let's see. Yeah, this hand kind of sucks. But whatever, I figure Read the Bones can find me some goodies. And I got some mana. And these things can evade his 1-3 blockers on the ground. He does have the Silk Spider Net, which is annoying, but I've got two tap lands to start. Three, four, five, five? Nope, he puts four cards into his graveyard with Tygum Scheme and keeps one on top, so probably something good. Usually like Treasure Cruise. If you're going to put that as many lands on... The graveyard, you probably have lands in hand. I guess I just read the bones here. Keep gas, bottom land. Draw land anyway. Not what I'm looking for. So yeah, treasure cruise. Yep. So we're just both kind of setting up our card advantage, advantage engine. So I need to get my clock on him though. So I sign in blood, follow it up with... 3-3 flyer. Mainly I figure that's better than playing the gear crafter because if he plays like a 1-3 blocker, which he has a lot of in his deck apparently. Omen Speaker, Elite Spell Fist. So anticipate. Oh, looks like he's kind of mana screwed. Even though he had all those lands that he could have put on top. He anticipated and found a land I'm scheming. Okay. Here. I guess I'll play the uh, gear crafter. Yep. Looking to lightning strike something. Yeah, I'm going to lightning strike this. And then a turn just to be mana efficient. And he taps out, which is good for me to save it with God's willing. So now I just need to find a way to kill it, or read the bones, find it. Fire Impulse, perfect. So I read the bones, it goes bottom, bottom. Hit a Duress, which is pretty good. So I guess I just Impulse, Duress. Ooh, double Helix, Cruise, Spellfist, Scribe, so... Uh, pretty easily within this graveyard as full it is, as it is to take the crew since Helix is redundant anyway. But he's got the full combo in hand, he's just got to have time to deploy it. De got to deploy it. Man, I am really not drawing that much removal, so... I just got to play out these flyers. Hope they get there. Yeah, like I have to kill him this turn. Otherwise I'm dead. Unless I draw removal. Come on. Wow, lightning strike. Lucky me. Ooh. Oh, I guess I... Oh, yeah, yeah. I can just uh, lightning strike him to the face. Ooh, attraction helix. Maybe I can't. Attraction helix. He has redundant traction helixes, so. Uh, I guess that means I'm going to kill it in response so that he can't bounce my Soul Tie Scavenger. That means I can play another Soul Tie Scavenger and have lethal on board next turn. So I don't get to just kill him. This turn puts them to two, and then get to play another guy. So now he's super dead. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty
Morley says, no way I could get lucky for once. No way. All right, game three. Split it. Got, ga got game two. He got game one. All right, this hand looks great. Bunch of two for ones, a little interaction. Hmm. Tap land. He's got a spell fist. I've got a tap land. Another magma spray. Spell fist. Okay, I guess I go find a mountain. I guess a tormenting voice. Discarding a land. Playing a tap land, so. Dang, another spell fist, okay. So these magma sprays aren't looking that good. I just need like lightning strike and fiery impulse. Okay, well, I guess I just play my two one. The tap land, okay. Doesn't want to attack, okay, that's interesting. Sound of blood. And land another two on, attack for one in the air. Tigan seeming, oh, ouch, that means he can hit me for six. Yeah, every spell he casts means he's unblockable. That's pretty crazy. Wow. So we're racing. He just hit me for six. I can hit hit him back for six as well, but he is well ahead of this race. He just tag him scheming though and put all those in his graveyard, so he very likely has treasure crew. So I'm gonna duress that out of his hand, yep. Double negate, disdainful stroke, God's willing. So he's got God's willing to be proactive, but other than that Treasure Crew's is most proactive card, so no, he didn't like that. Tormenting voice, discarding. Read the bones. Play Gurmag Angler. So now he's only got God's Willing with no white source. And I don't want to discard these Magma Sprays to the Tormenting Voice. So he's got no attacks, okay. Now I have attack for seven. I know he has the same full stroke and negate in hand though, so I guess I discarded a Gurmag Angler just because I knew he's got the same full stroke anyway. Read the bones. Put the angler on bottom, jeez. I don't know what I'm thinking. I just need to be like forcing him to be playing these sustainful strokes. Retraction Helix, that's pretty annoying. It makes all those guys unblockable. Ooh. I guess he has negate. Ugh. So before that I let the Helix resolve, I could have double magma sprayed that one. He'd have played negate and then hit me. Oh. It had just been lethal. He wouldn't even need to retraction helix my guy. He could just lethal. So I actually was forced out of playing any spells. And he only attacks with one. Because he realized he doesn't need to. All he needs is one spell to have lethal with three of them out. So I figure end of turn here, now that I'm not taking it, whatever, I just have to double bang spray his blocker and he goes into gates. At least he should. He does. So now, yeah, I'm dead to any spell. Since I can't uh, find any removal, but... I guess it's fine that I discarded extra anglers and stuff because I played as many anglers as I possibly could. Attack with all my team since I probably can't block anyway. And he's got the spell to give six points of unblockable, so 
Not sure what happened this game other than the fact that I had two magma sprays. If those would have been lightning strikes or fiery impulses, I feel like these creatures would have been dead and I would have taken no damage this game. But triple elite spellfist. Turns out elite spellfist is just a very good card. It must be answered. Just good job on defense. So yeah, I like uh, I like his draw there. Did pretty well. So we ended up losing going 2-1 in the Swiss, but still good enough for top 8. So stay tuned for those matches coming up.